in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed but then it is also based on our knowledge of the laws of the kingdom. I have taught you and I will continue to teach you that the laws of the kingdom, even the laws of the spirit, bring predictability to the believer's experience. Are we together? Yes. Laws systematize your results so that you are no longer shadow boxing. You can have predictable results in the kingdom by engaging the laws of the spirit. When I put my mic on, I did not expect it to not work. I knew it was going to work. I didn't have the time to verify. Because I'm not just believing it will work. I have come to trust the mechanism that makes it work. So I can take the risk to come up on stage before putting it on. The question is, what if it failed? Are we together? You must get to a point where you understand the ways of God. Faith is not based on nothing. Faith is not even based on emotion. Faith is not based on blind, bold face. It has to rest upon something. That something is not just the word of God, generically speaking. When we say the word of God, it means many things to many people. But it is not just the word of God, generically speaking. It must rest on the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. You see. Your faith has to rest upon the revelation. Faith meaning your conviction and the corresponding action of obedience you take based on that conviction. So every time you say, I know God will do this, that is not a very complete faith process until and unless you tell us what your conviction is standing upon. I know God will do it for me. Why? Ah, no, God is too faithful to fail. What does that mean? You didn't lie, but based on how, how are you sure he's too faithful to fail? You see, the only basis for the believer's faith is what is written, not what is assumed. You can't have faith based on assumption. I know God will not fail me. I know God will not fail me. I know that this will work. Based on what? If you cannot show me based on the mysteries of the kingdom apostle i'm giving i know i'll prosper what makes you believe that your giving will prosper i know giving works i what based on what you see most believers are not manifesting what they call bible faith it's just a lot of spiritual church activity what gives you the audacity to believe that if you part with x amount of naira or dollars for instance then you will rise you have to go to the word of God. The Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. Now you are talking faith. The Bible says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. And so because I have acted in compliance to that mystery, I have scattered. I expect the integrity of God to ensure that I increase. Now you are talking faith. As against I know God will do it. You see it now? Most people are not manifesting Bible faith. That's why they continue to go through a plethora of disappointments. Faith is not just based on what somebody said. Faith is not just based on what you think. Faith has to be based on what God has said. The mysteries of the kingdom. So Jesus took out time to teach the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb the mysteries of the kingdom and i'm sincerely committed to helping you understand as god continues to grant grace if you are not enlightened mentored and educated spiritually to understand the mysteries of the kingdom it will be impossible 
for the glory and the beauty that was destined to rest upon the saints to find expression in your life. God is not a superstitious God. Are we together? The outcome, the quality of your life depends upon your accessing light. That was the true light, the Bible says, that lighted every man. John 1, 5 says, and the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So when you come to church and the word of God is about to come, let your heart be, number one, excited because another mystery will be given to you and you archive these mysteries and you will rise up on the strength of these mysteries and your life will become an incredible testimony of the goodness of God. That people look at your life and they wonder, you become an object of marvel and wonder. Then you can raise others too because you are confident of what you did to have gotten there. If you rise by luck, it's a risk to even you. We rise in this kingdom by light. Are we together? So tonight, one of the mysteries of the kingdom that I want to share with us among the many you have heard and will hear in the course of this year, this mystery is a very personal revelation to me and this teaching tonight is dedicated to many people who are asking lord when will my turn come when will i see the manifestation of your prophetic word over my life there is something about the character of the kingdom and the operation of god that i want to show you in the name of jesus christ i'm teaching tonight on the reward system of the kingdom the reward system of the kingdom. I want you to see and to learn how God rewards men in the kingdom. The reward system of the kingdom. The reward system of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many names that God is called in the Bible. He's called Alpha, for instance. He's called Omega. He's called Jaira. He's called Rapha. God is called Deliverer. God is called Lifter. The Psalmist has a, a whole list of various names that God is called. And all these names, as you have learned, describe various dimensions of his operation. The names of God generally capture within them his modus operandi. So when you call him Jireh, for instance, you don't expect to be healed under the jurisdiction of that name. Are we together? That name only has to do with being a supplier and making sure that your necessities are met. When you call him Rafa, you do not expect to prosper financially just by Rafa. Rafa has the assignment of ensuring that your health and your bodily vitality is kept in place. And one of the names that the Bible reveals that God has and God is, is the name the Rewarder. Hallelujah. This is a very powerful revelation about God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, please. We read that scripture earlier on, but now let's look at it in context. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That means that he exists. Second, that he is a rewarder of them. Please say a rewarder of them. It's important to know, number one, that he is a rewarder. Then number two, it's important to know the them he rewards. Because not everybody qualifies for that reward. The Bible never said he's the rewarder of all. He says he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So for starters, it's important to know that God rewards. Please say God rewards. That is good news to your soul. Say it again. Say God rewards. Revelation chapter 22, please. And verse 12. Revelation 22 and verse 12. Jesus is speaking here as recorded by John in his vision. 
it says and behold i come quickly is that in your bible and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be so god rewards there is no confusion as to the fact that god rewards now listen very carefully the concept of reward is one that if you are not properly mentored you may reject it because um, it seems to put you in a position of guilt as far as your pursuit of God is concerned many believers have turned down the possibility of the reward system of the kingdom because they do not want to be trapped in that that mindset that they are seeking God because of things and while we advocate the fact that ultimately our pursuit for God must be because we love him are we together never forget that that we seek God and we pursue the things of the kingdom primarily because we love the Lord with all our hearts however it is important for you to come to terms with the fact that in the economy of God, in his dealings with men, he has programmed a system of reward that you must gratefully embrace. Are we together? It is important for you to come to terms with the fact that even though being rewarded is not your primary motivation for the pursuit of God and spiritual things, but that in the character of God as a giver, he cannot deny that there is a possibility of the saints being rewarded. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Because many believers have turned down that possibility of being rewarded. Let me give a definition here and then I begin to tie up a few things. What does it mean to reward? Write it down, please. We're examining the reward system of the kingdom. The key part of this teaching is how he rewards. But I just want to put a little background. We have to come to terms with the fact that God rewards. What does it mean to reward? Write it down, please. To reward means to give something to someone. I wrote here to give something to someone. To reward means to give something to someone in recognition of service, in recognition of effort, in recognition of contribution or achievement. I'll take it again. To reward means to give something to someone in recognition of service, effort, contribution or achievement. One last time. To reward means to give something to someone in recognition of service, effort, contribution, or achievement. So when we say God is a rewarder, it immediately tells you that he does not study the works of men for nothing. Are we together now? The Bible is very vocal as to the fact that God probes into the works of men consistently. And among the many reasons why he does so is because in his heart and in his character is the openness to always reward believers. Now let's see the concept of reward in the Bible. I will use four quick examples. I hope God is helping us already. Number one, let's look at the story of David and Goliath in First Samuel chapter 17, please. Give it to us very quickly from verse 24. To justify from scripture that the reward system of the kingdom is a kingdom concept. So we want to see how this played in the kingdom. This was a story of, um, of Goliath and David. Now watch this reading 24 to 27 and all the men in israel when they saw the man goliath now they fled from him and they were so afraid 25 and the men of israel said have you seen this man that is come up surely to defy israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killed him the king shall enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter can you imagine and make his father's house free of tax say rewards here is a beast that is threatening the people of God the nation of Israel and the king is saying that whoever is able to bring this man down this threefold reward number one 
great riches. Number two, he will have access to the king's daughter. Number three, his entire family will be tax free. Are we together? 26 now. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, I'm not going to fight for nothing. What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The last verse now. And the people answered him after that manner. So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Say rewards. David was not only motivated by his covenant with God. I hope you know that now. You see that he took out time to acknowledge the fact that there was a reproach upon Israel. But he was honest and open enough. And the Bible records it. What shall be done to the man who makes this happen? Taking away this reproach from Israel. Example number two. In the New Testament now, Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27 to 30. Matthew chapter 19, 27 to 30. Peter speaking for the disciples. Even though Jesus told them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The truth is that they followed him because they loved him, hopefully. But somewhere in their pursuit, it was very clear that they expected more than heaven. Are we together? And then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed you. What shall we have therefore? Jesus would have said, You are such a stupid man. You have exposed the wickedness of your heart. Now I know that you are a self-centered disciple. You should be grateful that I called you to follow me. But watch what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve stones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 29. And everyone that has forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, Jesus is speaking now shall receive an hundredfold and shall receive everlasting life last verse 30 but many that are first shall be last and last shall be first so Jesus is telling them that listen there is a provision for you that everyone who forsakes me in fact one of the synoptic accounts says he will receive all of this in this life then he says in the world with persecution and then in the world to come life everlasting so the apostles expected, gratefully so, to be rewarded. The next example, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll read 7 and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul expected a reward. Here's what he said. I have fought a good fight of faith. And truly he fought. Truly he fought. Do you agree? I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Let's read together. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. So Paul expected a reward. You would see Paul drive himself and go through all kinds of things, died many times, came back to life. Are we together? And he said, listen, I have fought the good fight of faith. I expect a reward. So you see that God's reward principle I wrote here is a divine principle, but it is also a human principle. The reward system is both a human principle and a divine principle. This is very important. Why does God reward men? Why does God reward men? And in fact, why do men reward men? Because I told you it's both a divine principle and then it is a human principle. Why do men reward men? And why does God reward men? 
The simple answer is that we walk by motivation. Human beings walk whether towards God or towards fellow men. We walk by motivation. This is very important. The human spirit must be motivated to bend over backwards and inconvenience themselves to accomplish strides and make things happen upon the earth. We walk by motivation. Hallelujah. If you are given a job, on one hand you are happy that you're now employed. But the truth is that the company has employed you because they needed your services. And now that you've been employed, there's a letter that is given to you that spells out the condition for your employment, but also includes the reward package. Am I right on that? And that that reward package, even at that time, is not final. It keeps adjusting as you are being promoted. When people shout about not being promoted, largely what they are shouting about is that their effort with respect to the reward system does no long, it, it no longer matches. Is that true? It doesn't match again. Why does God reward men? Because we walk by motivation. Now, I wrote something down here before we go to the reward principle properly. According to scripture, very quickly, there are three main things that God rewards. Number one, God rewards diligent pursuit. Please write it down. God rewards diligent pursuit. According to Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible says he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so god rewards diligent pursuit any kind and any dimension of diligent pursuit is rewarded jeremiah 29 and verse 13 jeremiah 29 and verse 13 it says and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart what does god reward and what do men reward also diligent pursuit number two what does God reward faithfulness faithfulness God rewards faithfulness just write for reference Matthew 25 from verse 14 to 30 the, the parable of the talents remember he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto one one and then he came back to probe the diligence of the people and the one with five talents the one with two all of them returned back and they were rewarded but the person who had one talent complained and he was thrown away and he was called a wicked and unprofitable servant so god rewards faithfulness galatians 6 verse 9 galatians 6 verse 9 and let us not be weary in well-doing is that in your bible it says for in due season we shall reap if we faint not so well-doing is a seed and there is a harvest attached to it the bible says we will reap in due season what does god reward faithfulness the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If God rewards faithfulness, it also means that men reward faithfulness. When you are faithful, you can be sure that you are connecting yourself to God's reward system. Number three, what does God reward? According to scripture, the works of men. Write it down, please. God rewards the works of men, particularly the purity. The purity and the motif behind the things that you do. And he also rewards the, I wrote here, the degree of compliance to patterns. God rewards the works of men. He rewards the purity of your motif. And he also rewards the degree to which you complied to the patterns. 
This is powerful. God rewards the works of men. The purity of your motive. What is motivating your service? And then your degree of compliance. Revelations 22 and verse 12. 22, 12. It says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work will reveal. According as his work will reveal. Very, very powerful. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 12, Apostle Paul began to teach us a very deep mystery. 3 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, 13, reading to 15, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try or test every man's work of what sort it is. 14. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. The reward is only if the work remains. The last verse, it says, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet as of fire. So God, reve God rewards our motif, the motif behind the things that we do. That is why you can find out, for instance, in church, Two people can be cleaning this pulpit. And to your natural eyes, they are all doing the same thing. But you will be surprised that their rewards in the spirit will differ sometimes east and west. Because God does not just reward the activity. He rewards number one, the motif. And then number two, the degree of compliance to patterns. Is someone learning already? So I've been able to establish the fact that God rewards... That as much as God does not want our consciousness of reward to be the primary and the ultimate motivation behind our loving and seeking him. It is a dangerous thing to be motivated by anything above love. The Bible says there remained these three, faith, hope, and love. It calls love the greatest. It calls love the bond of perfection. The moment you are motivated by any other thing higher than love, already you have tampered with the equation of rest and you have tampered with the equation of divine excellence. All things rest upon love. Are we together now? So our pursuit, let me repeat one last time, that in dealing with God and even in dealing with ourselves, our ultimate drive must be that we love God with all our hearts, and it is an honor to see him lifted and to see him glorified. But I'm being honest and open with you that God as a fair and a benevolent king and father has designed a reward system within this kingdom. And it is important for believers to be aware of God's reward system. Because you see, if you do not know the reward system of the kingdom you cannot place a demand on it and many things will go wrong in your life while you are serving god it will make god look unfair as far as your work with him is concerned are we together one of the many names that god is called in the bible is the righteous judge because he rewards now this is the meat of my teaching and i want you to please pay attention god's reward principle i want to teach you how God rewards men. Now that you know that he rewards. Now that you know why we need to be rewarded. Because there has to be a token. Expressions of consolation to our Christian experience. Most believers know that God rewards. But they do not know how the reward system of the kingdom works. And so they, are, they live very sincere lives. Holy and righteous lives. But they do not live rewarded lives. God's reward principle. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 1. I'll begin my reading from verse 32. Please pay attention now down to 37. I want to show you 
how God programmed his reward system to work. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may your eyes be open to see. Amen. At evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. 33. All the city was gathered together at the door. Can you imagine? And he healed many that were, uh, that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. 36. And Simon and they which... And they that were with him followed after him. Take note of that statement. Followed after him. 37, the last verse now. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Help us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. God designed the reward system of the kingdom. God designed the reward system of the kingdom to function based on the discovery, the development, and the deployment of your gift. God designed the reward system of the kingdom. Listen carefully, please. That the reward system of the kingdom was designed to function based on the discovery Number two, the development or refining. Number three, the deployment of your gift. Are we together? The Bible says the gift of a man. Is that in your Bible? The gift of a man make it room for him. Proverbs 18 and verse 16. The, a man's gift, he says, make it room for him. I think... Um, Either international standard version or God's word translation would say the gift of a man can open doors. Thank you. D giving a gift can open doors. I think God's word translation would say a man's gift can open doors for him. It can give him access to important people. NLT here says, back to KJV please, that the gift of a man can make room for him and can bring him before great men. Many believers do not understand why it looks like in the kingdom where everybody is serving the same God, God seems to isolate a few people and to lift them and to honor them as against others. Not understanding the reward system of the kingdom makes God look unfair until this lecture comes to your spiritual understanding it makes a lot of sense to look at god as one who just manifests favoritism lord it looks like you rejected everybody from this family it looks like you have a personal problem with my ministry it looks like you have a personal problem with my business why is it that i'm, I'm not able to rise and make maximum kingdom impact you may love god sincerely you will get the benefits of loving God. But there are certain things in this kingdom that are rewards. And if you do not understand the reward system of the kingdom, you may live a sincere but frustrated Christian life. Hallelujah. Write this down, please. The word gift there does not just mean a presentation, like something you package. The word gift there also means your value. V-A-L-U-E. Write it down, please. The word gift there also means your skill. It also means your potential. It also means your ability. I'll take it again. Your value, your skill, your potential, your ability. Everything in your life that constitutes an advantage to you and can become a blessing as far as God's program is concerned, and humanity is called your gift everything that constitutes an advantage to your life and can be deployed to serve the purposes of God and to be a blessing to humanity is what the Bible refers to as your gift so your gift is not just something that you hand over no 
it, it, it's, it's a word that captures holistically your value, your skill. Listen carefully. Whether spiritual, whether technical, whatever it is. In the scripture we read, Mark chapter 1, the Bible tells us when we begin to read verse 32, that at evening people came to Jesus. Watch this now. They didn't just come to sit down and waste their time. The Bible says they brought people who were diseased. They brought people who were possessed with devils. I wish we had time to act a little drama here. Imagine right now on this stage, are we together? Having someone who is a madman, someone who is sick, let's say with an incurable disease, and the family would have spent millions of naira trying to remedy for that situation. And here comes a man that they hear. Do you know at the point of need, you have the faith to take unbelievable risks. At the point of need, you will, when they tell you you are about to lose someone, and they say if you can get to Port Accord by tomorrow morning, there is a consultant, he's one of the top 50 in the whole world, and I mean he can solve this problem. You will be surprised where you will invent energy from. Even if it means to drive all through the night, not by a luxurious bus. It's better for you, based on that situation, to beg an arm robber on the road than to sit down and not do anything. It is amazing what people can do when they are pushed to the wall. So, don't take for granted that the Bible says they brought to him those that were diseased. Remember the guy that they tore a roof to put someone there? One thing you need to know with men is that at the point of need, people are desperate. Let me repeat myself again. At the point of need, people are desperate. Whether spiritual need, whether financial solutions, whether technical solutions, the moment people are in need and they cannot solve that problem for themselves, they become desperate and it puts them in a position where they are ever willing to reward, provided the solution is guaranteed. Is someone learning tonight? Respectfully speaking, I've had the honor of praying for people. I am amazed at the sacrifices that people make because they hear that I'm around or they hear that I can be available either to pray for them. And sometimes I'm humbled. Our international guests here can travel from distances as far back as Australia, not for a miracle service. And they say, Apostle, I flew just to have, if I could have five minutes with you, I know my life will change. Now, I'm not just excited that they flew to see me. I'm seeing the burden of trust that someone can leave a travel over two days journey to come and spend five minutes. Who do you think you are? If they perceive you to be that valuable, then it's impossible for you to be without reward. The Magi heard that a young boy, a young baby was born and that by prophecy that baby would be a king. The Bible says they shut down on their activities and they carried gifts. Is that in your Bible? of gold frankincense and myrrh is one thing for them to go and worship but then they started searching for where baby jesus was not miracle worker jesus baby jesus until they found him and they worshiped and they gave him those gifts you have no idea the reward system that can stand at the corridor of your destiny when value is not a question are we together now now, we live in a world that is largely superstitious, unfortunately, even for Africa. And while I believe in the supernatural, absolutely and forever, it is important for us to define intelligently and spiritually the modus operandi of God's reward system. So that we don't leave ourselves in all kinds of blind superstition that will keep leaving us in pain and regret. Are we together? Write this down, please. Your value, put in bracket every other thing I said, your ability, your gift, your value decides who pursues you and decides the extent of your reward. Your value decides who pursues you or who seeks you and decides the extent of your reward. Hallelujah. 
it is amazing and even incredible from a professional standpoint that there are certain professions in this nation and globally speaking that if you do pay the price to be able to attain onto a point of mastery in that profession the only thing that can stop you from rising are demon spirits but as far as the communication of value is concerned where your your own is to labor and to pay that price there is such a demand and that people will be willing one time i had the privilege to pray for someone who um they wanted to fly somebody a, one of their sons or so to fly him to one of these nations i think india or the u.s for a kidney transplant and so i was discussing with them and when they told me what they were going to spend plus accommodation because it's not that you just go there and turn around and come back plus accommodation and everything my heart almost dropped i said all this and the person who is going to do it will be somebody like me but is he really like me there's something that person has acquired and while you are threatened the person will calm you down and say that's all right and within two three days they have done a complicated surgery are we together now how do you expect to reward that person who has now preserved a life the same way you would otherwise now i'm speaking in a society where meritocracy is respected i'm not speaking is with the assumption of a corrupt free wickedness free society are we together because the template we have in africa does not make my teaching to make sense to many people because someone by wickedness can access a level of wealth when you now say where are those who are rich you will stand up it did not come by value and most young people right now are already throwing away value and the dignity of kingdom integrity because it looks cheaper and faster to bend over backwards hallelujah so from a professional standpoint the Bible says that this man ran and came to Jesus one time in his crusade he was teaching in a room and they came wanting him to heal a man and those guys could not have their way it was clear that nobody would give them attention please can we move this crippled man to Jesus they said don't even disturb us you don't know the situation that I have to and they said you know what we will negotiate with the owner of this house let's tear the roof my goodness imagine that man. and jesus called that act of madness faith that men can be so desperate i always give this example um sorry to bring bad memories but during the um i think it was ensas no 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 was it ensas protest where they boggled warehouses across several states most people in that state did not know that those things were warehouses or they passively they never paid attention to how people discovered the warehouses with bags of rice and indomie and you needed to see unity without any salmon some who could fly are we together i mean gentlemen will rise and you would see people nobody asks about tribe and religion again it was intelligence with coordination no ushers no protocol no worship team to charge any atmosphere but i mean you listen 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 i'm just showing you that that is how far human being can be organized at the point of desperation imagine what men will do for you when they discover the unique expression of god's gift upon your life and its ability to contribute to their well-being most of us take for granted and we have no idea the problems that people go through every day now you see several people come here by the grace of god and thousands others following online let me tell you the truth it is true that most people love jesus and they love me and i'm grateful for that but let me submit to you that nobody will come and sit down and waste their three, four, five hours. From as early as eight o'clock, nine o'clock, there are people here sitting down as though they don't have what to do. You think human beings are that stupid? Say value. One encounter 
genuine encounter by the spirit and pages of your life can open just like that it was said during the days of the, the revival of God's generals that meetings would be happening maybe 6 p.m. and by 12 2 p.m. you would see people queuing up patiently waiting praying in tongues and inventing all kinds of skills to draw energy until that time listen can I tell you the proof that you are not valuable or you have not developed your value is that your absence mean nothing to those around you when your absence means nothing to those around you it means your presence is not contributing anything serious please listen carefully I'm provoking you for a reason you know how valuable you are by the reaction that happens with your absence Jesus disappeared for three days and the disciples wanted they were almost dying they had to say look let's go back to fishing and when Jesus came up there are many of you if in your workplace you decide to take a break for two weeks you will return back and they'll say it looks like we've not seen your face you say well I've not been around you say oh no wonder but absolutely nothing changed with your absence that should not be so you should be such a contributor first to kingdom come and then to your environment that the slightest manifestation of your absence will be felt so deeply that is a sign that you are valuable hallelujah the gift of a man make it room for him and brings him before great people listen when God was preparing me for ministry this was one of the things I learned especially from great fathers and veterans like Dr. Miles Monroe because at that time many people had a lot of superstitious approach to ministry they just believed that once your heart was sincere without any development any refinement you just make sure your heart is pure towards God eventually you will become great it didn't make even spiritual sense to me because Jesus even though he was the son of God it took him 30 years of preparation and the Bible did not hide his diligence what will the son of God the logos of God be doing at the temple at age 12 for 18 solid years ladies and gentlemen Jesus was preparing for a ministry of three and a half years John the prophet was in the wilderness even though a prophet from God, he did not spare his training. Can I tell you sincerely, please hear me ladies and gentlemen. There are many of you who have not been able to make full proof of your ministry. Your ministry, they are not just fivefold, but every expression of value that you were sent by God to bring to your world. Because you do not know that your reward depends on your gift most people say my reward depends on God you are not lying but you need to understand how his economy works as sincere as you are as a CEO as born again as you are if someone comes to tell you I'm a member of Koinonia please employ me let me be um, the person to handle all your finances I'm honest you will tell the person as well eh? write your prayer point because that is a prayer point and go and drop it at the miracle service but you will not employ the person why because even though the person has told you he's a Christian you will need to be able to vet his proficiency and that without any biases or prejudices there are many people who downplay the place of value and sacrifice listen to me the reward system of the kingdom I repeat again is connected to value years ago this my precious people in the worship team they were itching so much to find expression they wanted to go for meetings any meeting at all and I stopped them I said you are not going anywhere you guys want aside from blessing the Lord you want to be local champions who will be angry competing with one another and fighting and insulting those who go ahead of you that is the trajectory the sad trajectory of mediocres they usually will do very small and not rise then they become frustrated because everyone goes and leaves them they have to coin out a justification and the way they do that is by fighting everyone and everything ahead of them it ought not to be so 
I remember challenging them and I said sit down I love you people but the songs you are bringing the nations cannot bless the Lord with that kind of investment stay and build yourself today to God be the glory you celebrate what they are doing you see and even today it's not like I'm done with them praise God remember I said thousand cubits after they measure it you rest then another tape comes again My dear violinist, when he, he sent me a text to appreciate me and I said, young man, you are doing well. May God bless you. I said, but go and rehearse. There's so much you need to learn. Don't think because people, you played violin, go and rehearse. I know the sound of excellence and quality. Go and rehearse. Build yourself again. Can I tell you, when people raise a very high bar for you, it's because they want the, hope, the nations to celebrate God in your life. This mediocre mentality we have that has endorsed mediocrity, you find out that people never rise for doing nothing. We keep clapping for ourselves. As a man of God, you preach a sermon that even you, you know that's not what God told you. You know that the Holy Spirit cannot breathe upon such a dull sermon, spiritually and intellectually dull. Okay, forgive yourself and go back and walk. You just assume because somebody who is your friend forever just came and said, what a brilliant sermon. I, and you actually believe that lie. Now, it's not about competition, but you need to charge yourself. I listen to all my teachings for two reasons. One, to be blessed by it. But number two, to make sure I never remain at that level. It is a rule and a covenant without excuse. Listen, until you give your pursuit in life and destiny a business approach. A business approach meaning you have to be strict with yourself. Don't mark yourself, write an exam and organize speech and prize for yourself for doing nothing. There are nations, there are territories. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom. You can imagine the hunger, tens of thousands of people coming. And there comes an ill-prepared preacher, not knowing what he's doing. You stand and you don't know what to say. Then you tell them God is going to move, nothing happens. You tell them God will heal, nothing happens. You quote all kinds of wrong scriptures. No. No. Can I tell you, I have taught you that there are many closed doors in our lives that are a sign of God's mercy. Because if that door had opened with our level of ill preparedness, it would take a long time to get those doors to open again. So God closes those doors as a sign of his mercy and challenges you to prepare. Joseph, make sure you are ready for Pharaoh before you ask the wine presser to make him remember you. Because when you stand before Pharaoh, it is a dream to interpret. If Joseph had messed up, he will go back to the prison and remain there forever. I made up my mind that I was not only going to be a spiritual preacher but that my communications will come with a blend of spirituality and intelligence for God's sake that when you are teaching people they must find a point of applicability there must be intelligence no matter the mysticism and how a mysterious what you are communicating is learning from Jesus you must be able to break down kingdom mysteries in a way and to a context that people can understand and find a point of applicability in their lives. Are we together? What do you do with the gift of God in your life? Number one, you discover it. I'm showing you the dynamics now because knowing, maybe you write this first, knowing you are gifted is not enough. You must pay the price to refine and develop that gift knowing you are gifted ladies and gentlemen knowing you have skill knowing you are called knowing you are a businessman knowing you are a prophet knowing you are an apostle is not enough paying the price to develop it that is where your honor is and that is where your reward lies 
The reward is not in the discovery. The reward is in the refinement and the deployment. Let me take it again. The reward is not in the discovery. You are not rewarded for discovering yourself. You are not rewarded for discovering your gift. You are not rewarded for discovering you are called into ministry. You must be able to develop and refine. Let's talk about development. The first thing you do with your gift is to discover. The second is development. Spare me a few minutes as I charge your hearts. Look up, please. You want to develop your gift, you must be prepared to go through the furnace of affliction. The furnace of affliction is not a bad word. You know, once we hear affliction, many people just run away and say, I reject it. Can I tell you? Sacrifice is the language of champions. Nobody becomes great at their terms. Let me use ministry for instance. I do not want to speak like I'm bragging, but heaven knows. And I can tell you, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Make no mistake about the glory of God that is revealed in the life of people today. Whether it's accessing the anointing, whether it's staying on course to find revelation, whether it's understanding leadership. Are we together now? Knowledge is not a gift. You buy the truth. Developing anything is difficult. Learn that from architecture. You can destroy a building in one minute, literally without exaggeration. But it can take you as much as three, four, five years, depending on the kind of structure you're erecting. Building anything is hard. Building men, building stamina, growing in the anointing, building your faith, building your knowledge bank, both spiritually and intellectually, it takes time. This is where many people miss out on it because we have this superstitious idea that just because the Holy Ghost is in my life and I have scripture, automatically with no effort on my own part, I will rise mysteriously, especially because of forces in the kingdom that have not been taught properly. Chiefest among them is favor. I teach favor a lot and I can tell you I'm a living epistle of that mystery but it does not have told you favor is merited the idea that is unmerited is what has deceived people into complacency and laxity I know my God will do it be laughing at me today tomorrow you will bend your head in shame as a prophetic confession I agree but with no effort on your own part to work with prophecy, you will be disappointed in multiple folds. I tell you, are we together? I've seen many people who want to build great ministries, for instance, rather than submitting themselves to learning, to understand the ropes around excelling in ministry. All they are interested in is just a little impartation. Apostle just touched my head and I know everything will go back. I assure you it will be a risk for God to send thousands of people with that bankruptcy of knowledge. You do not know what human beings can do when you are not trained. To understand the psychology of people is not only scripture you need to understand. The, the kinds of problems that your organization will go through, I'm not sure you'll be ready to handle that. And so God will teach you. He will guide you. Are we together now? It pains my heart when I see several believers who seem to admire others and make it look like God just isolated a few people and decided to lift them and has left others to scrounge in mediocrity. No, the Bible says the same Lord, ladies and gentlemen, is rich unto all. It is true that he may give one five talent. It's true that he may give one two talent. But a hundred percent result is possible at any level. Not everybody in truth may have access to an international or a global ministry. This is why God rates men based on the faithfulness, what he gave them. It would be unfair to expect five more talent from the one he gave two talents to. That's why the same commendation he gave the one with five, he gave the one with two. Because within the scope of their ability, they did the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Developing your ability will require you to invest time spiritually, to invest time intellectually, 
to invest time in terms of physical dissipation of energy you want to prepare for a great life you want to prepare for a global ministry you want to prepare to be a global brand be ready to make contact with the spirit your times of prayer i mean rich moments of prayer capacity in the spirit there are certain spiritual burdens you cannot carry until there is a track record of building robust strength in the spirit it will be unfair for you to carry say this line arrays and drop it on a human being just one person it will be unfair because this will be too heavy for one person under normal circumstances so god is not going to trust you with the burden of nations when he sees and vets that you are ill prepared please listen carefully the spirit of god is speaking to us there are families, respectfully speaking, that may never rise because they have not taken the personal responsibility to know that if we are to rise, it is everybody's business and we must take responsibility. You have a family of 10 people. The men are lazy. The women are entitled. Are we together? The parents don't care. The younger ones are blaming the elder ones and all of them are blaming demons for the ultimate reason why they are not rising. And the demons are surprised because they know what they did and they know what they did not do. How could you blame us for everything? It's funny, but I pray you are getting the message. It is very consoling to blame spirits because you can't take them to court. It's very consoling to blame spirits because they will not appear and say, you are lying. This one, I did it. This one, mm -mm. The mediocre excuse is to transfer blame to the realm of the spirit why are you not rising it's because of this and that i used to have one dream and they used to oppress me okay minus the oppression what have you done nothing you give the gentleman hundred thousand the next thing you find him running around eating in a restaurant with people who are millionaires and he's there hundred thousand home and abroad and he's eating too and you are wondering what are you doing here and the reality of the time will take you from that place back to where you were because you've not qualified to get there are we together yes listen very carefully i made up my mind that i would not be praying that god should bring people rather i would be praying that god should build capacity lord build capacity so that when you bring the people i can truly be a blessing to them build capacity so that when i declare over your life when i prophesy over your life that week in and week out as people converge from across the globe it will not be that you are coming to just listen to cunningly devised fables no i challenge all the departments and the workers as they work don't just say this is a spiritual platform maintain the highest level of excellence that can be it is spirituality but these spirits are coming in human bodies so make sure excellence is maintained at the highest level is someone learning now tell yourself no excuses shout it again say no excuses for as long as you continue to justify mediocrity you will keep getting angry and jealous and envious of people who are paying a price you are not seeing are we together now yes our world today is full of bitter angry and envious people who find pride in pulling others down because they do not know that with a, with a with the press of diligence god can reward the same lord is rich unto all but i can tell you not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards you are praying five minutes snoring while you pray that five minutes living your life carelessly jumping from pillar to post and there are others who are paying the price while you are sleeping they are awake praying over nations studying for hours investing in knowledge there is a name god is called the righteous judge please listen to me i say it again the righteous judge you can't carry the same level of grace no god is not a politician while others are submitting themselves to mentorship and to learning you sit down and learn watch videos build your spirit build capacity 
I am amazed at several men of God, great people who are doing great things, and sometimes they will honorably reach out and just say, Apostle, you know, have a conversation and say, please, I want you to share one or two things with me about this area. And I'm humbled. I'm saying, my God, can you imagine? These people are also doing great things as God has helped them. But look at the, the humility of heart. And there are others who are not going anywhere. They've not started anything, not doing anything. And everybody is their colleague. No. Are we together? A gentleman one day said, Apostle, I don't know if you can give me an opportunity for us to pray together one day. I looked at him with compassion, honestly, and it's not pride. I just said, this, this man. <laughs> what do you think the power of God is? A charm? Do you know what it means to stand and speak over God's people? And the God of the universe begins to honor your speakings. Now, I, I hope you know, I hope you know not to sound proud. God is not a man. Burn that in your spirit. God is not a man. You want to speak over a man's life? Let the gates of your destiny be open. And then it is open. Do you know the kind of sacrifice? This is the point I want us to get. Ladies and gentlemen, so I, I really hate sharing my story because most times um, it, it doesn't achieve what I wanted to achieve. It just looks like we are just marketing ourselves and, and, you know, acting arrogant. But I wish I had the liberty to share with you the instances of the sacrifices that this man before you has made. It will be evil for you to believe what is happening is just luck. I repeat, it will be evil for I don't care whoever to believe that what you see today is luck. No. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. But only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. Only Yeshua will reign forever. Hear me. You want a generation to hear your voice? It's more than posting videos on social media. Now, I'm saying this respectfully speaking. I want to help my precious generation get out of that garbage and invest in the spirit. It takes more than just telling people, I am here. There is a track record in the spirit. Let me tell you, if heaven does not sign upon your life, you will waste your time for nothing upon the earth. You believe that people will just come and give you finances like that? Everybody will not dash you. You have to understand the financial system of the kingdom. God can raise men to support you. But you believe that men will be the ones to run your, your life financially? Go and find out how finances work. And bring rest to your life once and for all. The anointing, you need to go and stay with God. Find out the various wells in the spirit and the skill to fetch and draw from them. Hmm. Not every well works the same way. Just because you learned how to fetch from a particular well, the Bible says wells of salvation. There are different skills to fetch. So you will see people who are operating at different frequencies in the spirit. It's because they have mastered how to draw from the spirit. Hallelujah. The sacrifice of fasting, the sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of honoring the voice of God, even at your inconvenience. I cannot have told you, I don't know how many times God has given me painful instructions. 
give this, empty this, do this. And sometimes it does not make sense. I shared with you my story last year. When God gave an instruction to sow a seed, I knew that a season was coming and God was opening me up. It was a new dimension in the spirit. I've taught you how to discern when seasons come to an end. An unusual desire to pray. An unusual desire to give. Unusual attack from the kingdom of darkness. These are signs that tell you a season is coming to an end. You don't want to be around people again. Something just isolates you to be alone. is because the master wants to speak to you. And if you don't understand these writings, you will keep wasting your time. There are things God will never tell you in public. You need to painfully know how to stay alone. Then his voice comes. Hallelujah. And God gave me an instruction. First, to bring a serious seed as a ministry and to sow. That seed itself was, I can tell you sincerely, at any level it will touch you. And then, then came the bigger instruction. And I'm saying this because I want you to understand. It's not to brag at all. God now told me that what I told the ministry to give, you give twice that amount. When you give Ishmael, you can drive him in one day, go away. But when God says to give Isaac, it will touch you all. Isaac will touch you. Isaac Ba will touch you. But you see, I've worked with God a bit. And I know that every time God says, open your hand, it's not because of what is there. It's, about, it's because of what he's bringing. And with that sacrifice, I, I rejoiced in my pain as I honored God. God forbid that he will speak and I will not listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, the rest is history. Another dimension opened for me that till forever. Listen, people do not just rise. The sacrifice of paying the price to build, are you willing to go through it? For someone, God can just call you and say every night for the next three months, I want to meet with you. 12 to 3 it is me and you alone that is my covenant for the next three months it may not be for everybody but it's part of the preparation to birth and now you may even be a businessman that's what will surprise you and say god go and talk to them apostle and the rest and leave me in peace i thought you would teach me how to make money he's preparing you because when those billions come demons will say where did the money go to and they will follow your business and say we are here the king of Tyre just found out that something left heaven and did not pass through him to you. And so they will have to come and vet. And so God can tell a businessman, for three months you are not talking money with God. You are fasting and praying and building capacity. Afterwards, a door of business will open and by the time people think you are just wearing suit and tie, they do not know that by sacrifice you brought yourself into the fivefold ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you what separates men from boys. There are many people who do not want to pay the price. It is a language that our ignorant, sadly, and arrogant generation does not want to hear. Sharp, sharp everything. It is only God that will tell you the amount of times I've finished this Bible you are seeing. My former Bible, you open it and you will think there's writing everywhere. Sometimes I will write all kinds of things there because you are studying to show yourself approved that's why you see me quote scriptures and i can tell you what another version says you try it if you think it's a gift it's not a, you know we have this idea that god just magically endowed you no the grace i'm not downplaying the grace of god i hope you get what i'm saying you want to command power authority over nations you are going to have to stay with God are you ready to invest it with the spirit you don't have a track record with the Holy Ghost listen to me you come out like this just playing games and for show sure, you will only embarrass yourself for nothing it says but I know whom I have believed you came here tonight 
not just to meet God alone, but you came here to meet men whose blood are dripping upon the altar. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear upon my body. There is a scar that the realm of the spirit knows. Jesus I know, Paul I know, Joshua Selman I know. You, it's, it's with blood you sign that signature. He that cometh unto God must come believing that he is the rewarder. While you are fasting, you know the rewarder is watching you. While you are praying, the rewarder is watching you. Somebody says, come and bribe and become a director. And you say no. And for that reason, your children pay the price for one year. The rewarder is watching. Can I tell you? If you do not know the rewarder, compromise will look pleasant if you do not know the rewarder all these cutting corners in ministry you can stay even if it's with five people with joy i know the rewarder is watching you are training the five people as if you are preaching in a stadium mentoring them because those five people are not your members they are your leaders you are training when your leaders are trained members can now come Are we together? Yes. Development is difficult. It took Jesus 18 years to be ready for ministry. 18, 1, 8. 18 years of actively building himself. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to throw away premature manifestation and premature exposure and get back to the place where men are made made for their destinies are we together now the stage is not for rehearsal the stage is for manifestation if you want to rehearse go to the wilderness you will be given a chance to kill the lion don't come and stand before goliath to try trial and error will destroy you goliath is not playing games learn with the lion learn with the bear and master the art of war when you stand before goliath it is one one opportunity to bring him down listen you must master the mysteries of the presence of god you must master the mysteries of the anointing you must master the mystery of dominion. You must master the mysteries of influence. You must master the mysteries of the word of God. People will not just come and listen to you like that. Businessman, what have you read about business? Do you know the best people in your industry? Have you humbled yourself to learn from them? Or you are wallowing in the pride of saying everybody's a colleague. Run away from colleague mentality. That's what has kept many people down in this our arrogant generation. Just because great men are humble does not mean they are stupid. Know where you stand and draw the line with honor. No matter how humble our fathers are, sometimes a particular father of faith, I will not mention the name, but when we have the privilege of talking, sometimes you can say, ah, eh, you know, I'm speaking to an apostle now. And I just laugh. I say, ah, daddy, don't, don't say that. Oh, he's still your boy. And we're laughing. Most of you, as they say that kind of thing, you carry it as a compliment. That a pastor is speaking to an apostle. What, what, what foolish indoctrination. These are men who, their tears move heaven. And heaven will say, who is making you cry? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall 
Let the rain 